keeps us warm. It keeps us cool. It protects us. As simple as double-paned glass, or as complex as the shell of a space station. It's all around us, but it's almost always out of sight. It's an essential part of almost every building we inhabit. Now, insulation on Mother Marvels. It's the secret weapon in the war on energy consumption. With a worldwide energy crisis upon us, scientists and contractors are scrambling to design and build more fuel-efficient buildings. In a typical three-bedroom house, 25% of heat is lost through an uninsulated roof, 15% through uninsulated floors, 25% through windows and doors, and 35% through uninsulated walls. Effective insulation can put an end to these losses. It's pumped up, it's gooey, and it's one of the best insulators available. It's foam. Foam products come in many forms. One of the most effective is spray. The process of spraying foam insulation is almost an art form. It takes a steady eye, a sure hand, and a definite sense of rhythm. Foam is an exceptional insulator for roofs. Roof insulation foam offers significant advantages over alternative materials. It forms a seamless membrane which stops leaks. The material flows into cracks, crevices, expands, and seals up all the leaks. It also offers much more insulation value versus alternative materials. And the fact that it's soaked into all the cracks and crevices and cured means that it's gluing everything together, so it's going to be able to withstand significantly more harsh weather conditions than a typical roof would. The key to making a smooth urethane application when we're talking about roofing is to overlap each previous pass by 80 to 90 percent. But when you're spray painting, normally you'll think about a 50 percent overlap. When spraying urethanes, you think of 80 or 90 percent. Because urethane expands 30 times its liquid form, that becomes critical if you want to get a smooth application. The idea of surrounding a building with a complete envelope of insulation like foam has been growing since the 1920s, when the way we constructed buildings began to change. Prior to the 1920s, even going back to the Victorian age, you found that homes were constructed of heavier, denser materials. A lot of that was just the prevalence of old growth forests that were used for framing. Uh, by the time the 1920s rolled around, we found that materials were becoming lighter so they could be constructed more quickly. But there also became a, more, a greater emphasis on the idea of the thermal envelope of a resident. You start to insulate the floors and the walls and the roofs. The use of building insulation was first made mandatory in the United States during World War II to conserve fuel for the war effort. You all of a sudden had to start being more concerned about conserving your energy resources, whether it be oil or gasoline. And because of that, they looked at better applications of insulation. That same example was driven home in the 70s. People reacted to oil prices and gas prices and energy prices going up. The 1970s saw the advent of the idea of the super insulated home. Foam is a substance that is formed by trapping many gas bubbles in a liquid or solid. One of the most popular foams is polyurethane. Originally developed during the 1940s for military and aviation applications, it began to be used as insulation during the 1950s. In the 1970s, innovators began spraying the material. Polyurethane is made of several key ingredients. These are the materials you see stored in the large tanks behind me. This is a polyol. It's based on sucrose or sugar and petroleum products. This is a surfactant. Surfactant controls the size and the shape of the bubbles. This is a catalyst which controls reaction rate. The quicker the reaction, the smaller the bubbles. The size of the bubbles is important because it dictates the density of the foam. 
roofing foam, which might be walked on, needs to be stronger and denser than wall foam, which is rarely touched after it's applied. All of this is factored into the formula when a batch of foam material is mixed at the factory. But where do the bubbles come from? The blowing agent. Blowing agent is a liquid that has a low boiling point. When it's spray applied, it converts from a liquid to a gas, forming the bubbles. These four ingredients are mixed together into one liquid. But they're only part of the recipe for making foam. The other part is a substance called isocyanate, a highly reactive molecule. It's separated from the other ingredients until the spraying begins. They're dispensed separately all the way through the hoses to the gun. When the applicator pulls the gun, the materials are mixed together, the reaction occurs. It hits the substrate in a liquid form, but the reaction drives the expansion very, very quickly. Within seconds, you've got cellular plastic. A properly insulated house can save a homeowner a great deal of money. The consumer today is better educated as far as the value of better insulation in their home. What they have learned is they can pay a little bit more on the front end to better insulate their home, but they will recoup savings in the long term versus their energy costs because their house is better insulated. Today, insulation-savvy home and business owners are finding that there are savings to be gained from insulating not only the walls of a building, but the windows too. Each year in the United States, nearly $13 billion worth of energy in the form of heated or cooled air escapes through holes and cracks in residential buildings. Insulation will return on Modern Marvels.